The Bucks' Robin, Chris Middleton, suffered a left hamstring injury in 2022's first round matchup with the Chicago Bulls, keeping him out for the remainder of the playoffs. Drew Holiday did his best to fill Middleton's shoes, averaging 21.4 points per game in a seven-game thriller against Boston. Problem was, Drew shot just 36% from the field and 30% from deep. That Celtics series saw Giannis perform like the generational talent he is, as the most physically dominant player on earth, rose to the occasion with beastly averages of 34 points, 15 rebounds, 7 assists, plus over a steal and a block per game. Boston deserves credit for ultimately handling their business, like Milwaukee did during their championship run a year prior, but that doesn't mean Bucks fans didn't leave their Game 7 of the second round watch party with an empty feeling in their stomach, wondering what could have been if their second scoring option was healthy, a player who's one of the top marksmen in basketball when he's 100%. Unlike other top teams, the Bucks don't get caught up in the drama, and in that sense resemble the dynasty San Antonio Spurs. But it's a damn shame top players in Giannis Adetokounmpo and Chris Middleton are looked at as boring, because the humble duo is anything but that when they step out between the lines. The Freak and Cash play the game strictly to handle their business and could care less about their individual marketability. It's why fans of the old school, physical, non-buddy-buddy culture of the NBA have hopped on the Bucks bandwagon. And it's why Hoops fans in Wisconsin are expecting the best slasher the game has ever seen to bring them several more championship rings before it's all said and done. In addition to Middleton finding his flow post-injury, what else needs to happen for the Bucks if they're going to reclaim the association's throne? You'll find out in this video. Before continuing, according to YouTube's analytics, only 10% of you watching right now are subscribed, so press the box and turn on notifications if you haven't already. Also, leave a like on this video. It takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. Now into the content. In all but two games of Milwaukee's playoff run this year, which ultimately ended at the hands of the Boston Celtics, Milwaukee was forced to proceed without a three-time All-Star and a player who's averaged at least 20 points and four assists per game in four different seasons. Right before breaking down Chris Middleton and Milwaukee's chances in 2022-23, since the franchise is honoring its history by wearing threads commemorating their run to the Eastern Conference Finals back in 01, like we'll be doing with seven other teams pictured right here who are also getting classic edition jerseys for this upcoming season, I'm going to quickly break down Milwaukee's historical outlook. Ever since their inception back in 1968, the Milwaukee Bucks have been a consistently successful organization. The 90s was the team's one poor decade as they missed the playoffs seven straight times. But other than that, it's been a smooth ride for fans in Millie. Whether it was the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Oscar Robertson era, which resulted in a championship, the team making 12 straight playoff appearances from 1979 to 1991, led by players like Sidney Moncrief, Marquise Johnson, and Terry Cummings, or the Ray Allen, Glenn Robinson, and Michael Red days in the early thousands, the Bucks are a franchise that has an under-talked about, yet deeply rooted history. Historically, this team almost never misses the playoffs, a trend which hasn't merely continued, but has been built upon in the current Giannis Adetokounmpo era. Breakdowns on Middleton, plus a crucial role player in Bobby Portis are coming up, but none of the Bucks' modern-day exceptionality occurs without the steal of 2013's NBA draft, whose name no one could pronounce when he was selected 15th overall nine years ago. The alphabet turned out to be the real deal, as even when he was a role player during his rookie campaign, it was clear the Bucks had something special in Giannis Adetokounmpo. The way Giannis took up the length of the court in a matter of several strides, and how he dunked it after taking just a step within the three-point line, entailed that he was about to take the next step. That the Greek freak did, as not before long Giannis was the most improved player of the year, a two-time MVP, and also a finals MVP, plus a six-time All-NBA player, and a member of the 75th anniversary team. Giannis had one of the all-time great NBA Finals showings last year, posting the same numbers he posted this year against the Celtics in Round 2, averaging 35 points, 7.1 assists, 15 rebounds, plus over a block and a steal per game on the biggest stage against the Phoenix Suns. Even in 2022's playoffs, the shorthanded Bucks ranked number one in defensive rating by five points over the second-ranked Celtics, which can be attributed to the underrated yet generational defensive impact of a Adetokounmpo. 
A separate video entirely can be made on the development of Giannis's passing, as well as that defense, but lost in the shuffle in the early to mid-2010s, Middleton's outside shooting perfectly complemented the point-forward slashing nature of Adetokounmpo from day one, and being teammates for their entire careers, these two have helped instill a workmanlike culture to Milwaukee's organization. Back in the 2021 Bucks run to the championship, Middleton averaged a hefty 23.6 points, 7.6 rebounds, and 5.1 assists per game, statistical categories where he was severely missed in the following postseason. But if you're going to get a full idea of how much individual playmaking and defensive gravity drawing that Milwaukee didn't have after Middleton went down against Chicago, let's look at a game Middleton played against an elite defensive team like the Miami Heat during the regular season. The Bucks playbook consists of a ton of action featuring plays with multiple screening actions happening simultaneously, and you see the advantage of having Middleton as a facilitator within that offense right here, whereas Giannis sets the on-ball. Bobby Portis seems to be just a decoy when he slips this flare screen for Drew Holiday at the same time. That gets all defenders focused on Chris and Giannis, allowing Portis to receive a wide open top of the arc triple off a mid-air kickout pass from Middleton. Playing four out, one in, Giannis sets the cross screen for Middleton, then follows Chris as he receives the pass from Drew to set the on-ball screen, and this drive into his jab step, behind the back sauce up, pump fake and lean in to somehow stay on balance and drain the midi is shot creation you just can't teach. On very tightly contested jumpers, so within two to four feet, Middleton still made 32% of those deep range bombs. Again, you have Portis on the wing faking a pin down while the on-ball action takes place, but making this play is a slick floater pass from Middleton to Ibaka after Chris gets blitzed by Butler and Hero. You can't name a shooting guard in the NBA with a better mix of deep range shooting and passing than Chris, not to mention on the other end of the court defensively, Middleton's annually one of the most valuable stoppers at his position. Most valuably provided by Middleton is the pressure relief he blesses Giannis with, given he's another high volume pick and roll scorer in Budenholzer's system. Holiday can be that second guy for a certain amount of time, which is a good reason for why the Bucks were able to get one win away from beating the eventual Eastern Conference champions this year, but having the polished three-level and confident scoring from Middleton gives this championship-caliber Bucks squad the juice they need to get over the hump. In addition to Middleton finding his legs defensively and Flo on the other side getting into a rhythm shooting the ball, you can't forget about the biggest fan favorite for this Milwaukee team in Bobby Portis, who re-signed in Cream City this summer on a deal worth $48 million over four years. Portis could have received a much bigger bag on another team, but it just goes to show you how committed he is to the city of Milwaukee that he would take a pay cut to stay with the 2021 champs. Bobby's seventh season in the NBA saw him post career highs in points per game at 14.6 and rebounds per game at 9.1. After being a bench piece in the previous season, Portis started in all but three games during the 2021-22 campaign, continuing to be a massive piece in the front court next to the Brooklyn Nets franchise leader in points, Brooke Lopez. Who doesn't get enough credit on the Bucks? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out. And the most shout outs by September 21st earn free merchandise of their choosing. Last upload, I asked who gets the bag from the Warriors between Draymond or Jordan. Today's speaks winner is Boston Haltane, who says, I think that the Doves will prioritize signing Dre because of the impact of their dynasty and also because they want to keep Steph happy. Although Green's play has fallen off over the last few years, he's still a reliable passer and screen setter. Last year, he was the front runner for DPOY before an injury took him out of the race. With that being said, there's still a chance that Draymond is willing to take a pay cut to let Poole get his first big contract. Draymond puts the team before himself, and I see him being willing to cut down on his salary to allow the Doves to bring back Poole. Great answer from Boston. You tell the story in Community Speaks, so leave your take.